heck of a week this week uh, in the, the uh, in Congress. They vote down uh, the president's infrastructure jobs bill. And, and explain this. How can folks sit here, Republicans and Democrats, because in the Senate, you have some Democrats who joined the GOP, talk about putting America back to work when they have voted over and over and over in the past for infrastructure. And all of a sudden, ah, no thanks. <laughs> because... They are concerned about getting reelected. They are concerned about campaign donors. They are concerned about their, their job over the jobs of the American people. I mean, there is no reason to not have voted in support of that legislation other than political purposes. You know, I disagree. I disagree. Uh, we have a $15 trillion, million, uh, $15 trillion deficit. Uh, what you want to do, create just makeshift jobs? I mean, the president and his administration has to get away from income and expenses and create assets. And, and you, in order to create assets, you grow the small business owners in this country. You, you build the dams, you build the bridges. But part and of it, the plan includes but, but tax it, breaks for small businesses. No, I, and part gotta, of the plan, when you no, talk about no. building infrastructure, remember that when you're improving roads and bridges, that means that a company has a, a better way to get their goods and services to another community, which then in that build that community. But this is what the president promised us in the first stimulus package, and it did not happen. Yeah, and now he's asking you know for, asking for the second no, stimulus package. Well, you know why it didn't happen? Package Joe, package Joe, did you know why it didn't happen? Go because ahead. governors like Haley Barber used the money to do what? Balance their budget. Right. So did several other yeah. Also, state Rick Perry. State that, yeah, so did yeah. governor. So did Governor Rick Perry. And that's one of the reasons that it didn't happen. Let us be straight up. You're talking about it was paying for itself. Also, I wish that the same people said, oh, I don't like this program now. Where was it when it was proposed by Republicans? That's the, the cleverness of this administration. They took a page from the Republican playbook, slipped it in their playbook and said, this is the same legislation you supported before. The, bottom line, bottom line, the number one goal, kick the economy under the bus so that President Obama doesn't get reelected. Right. And in trying to do so, what I was going to say, listening to Karen speak when you first asked, posed the question, my first response was they've decided they don't like their jobs. They don't want to be members of Congress, and they're asking the American public to kick them out in 2012. I mean, that's the only possible answer to the question that I can come up with, because quite frankly, if we're going to have an honest discussion about the proper role of government and what government can do and cannot do, there's very little that government can do to create jobs. But the things that government can do, for example, infrastructure, the president <coughs> has proposed it. And I think in right. a way, this is a gift that keeps on giving, because quite frankly, we've had some things that happened over the fall that I think made President Obama look a bit emasculated. For example, John Boehner saying, no, you cannot speak to a joint session of Congress tonight. Do it on the night of the football game. This has given uh, President Obama the power to come back and say, I'm a man. You're not going to chump me. I'm in charge of getting this economy back on, on board. And so I'm going to pass everything that I need to do through executive, now, uh, through executive order. It's interesting. They, the, the, the Democrats wanted to tax folks making a million dollars or more 0.7 percent. GOP said absolutely not. All of a sudden, we see President Obama's poll numbers rising because Democrats are driving home this whole issue of income inequality. Yep. Republicans appear to be in a position now where literally they are defending anything for the wealthy. And when you look at the numbers, people are saying, wait a minute. Do you guys even care about anybody less than a million dollars? Well, 0.7% of the one dollar over the million dollars, the first million we're not going to increase the taxes. But, and it's only going to be on the money over a million. Right. And that's yeah. called shared sacrifice. Also at a time when 70 plus percent of Americans that's have right. said this is what they support, this is what they want, and a substantial portion of Republicans within that have said they support it. Not to mention, ironically, Herman Cain leading in the polls with his 999 by Grover Norquist, the real boss of the Republicans, by his rules, that's raising taxes. So they're supporting a guy who proposes raising taxes at the t same time saying, we're not going to raise taxes on the wealthy to help the 1%, the 99% who are struggling in this country. Tom no, Sean, do Republicans have a problem when they are creating the impression that we will defend anything for the rich 
when you have this income inequality all of a sudden becoming a story, now you have folks who sort of are backing off of that. Now, all of a sudden, you're now seeing that phrase show up in Republican talking points when they are talking about the economy, because that is a potent issue, this whole income inequality. I think with Senator Charles Schumer introduced the legislation, which he tried to introduce before, to say at a million dollars, the Republicans became very comfortable with it. But you know what? What, what we're doing, and, and Grover Norquist is not the boss of the Republicans. That's a sound bite. No, no he, he got, he got, he got three points, points clear, Joe. John, John, John Boehner dissed him this week. He huh? said he was just another American. Yeah, That's he what dissed he said. him, but he, he yeah. sure didn't sign his pledge, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. He sure did, yeah, didn't yeah. he? It was, a, it, was a, it was a decent pledge. But listen, back on the issue. You know, this president... Excuse me, Herman. You just contradicted yourself. This president has created <laughs> class warfare in this country to make it seem as though those that create wealth, create opportunities in this country, should be further punished. One thing that Herman Cain has right, everybody should carry their weight in this economy. Everybody should pay tax. It's not just the rich. But what I'm, are the have-nots doing for the economy? What, what's that's that's yeah, what are they doing? You said earlier, with a $15 trillion debt, under President George W. Bush, those tax cuts contributed to the same deficit. When we extended the tax cuts in December, when President Obama said, let's not extend it at $700 billion uh, for the wealthy, GOP said, absolutely not. We want extended for all. That contributed to the debt. So how can Republicans stand here and say, debt, 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 but the tax cuts contributed to the same debt and then get upset? And then also to say that tax, more tax cuts for the wealthiest are going to create more jobs. Well, where are the jobs from the Bush tax cuts, by the way? Even like, conservative economists have said point blank. That is a fallacy. I was on, I, look, Ben Stein, I was on CNN with him on Joy Bayer's show on HLN. He said it is an absolute joke. There's no proof from anybody where keep cutting taxes will somehow create jobs. And Raising you know, taxes does not help the economy. But you know, if you, if you are truly somebody who is living in, below the poverty line, and you, you deign to watch any of these public policy discussions right. or, or look at what our politicians are doing. Here's what I hear. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, I think most people are saying a pox on both of your houses. Right. People talk about the rich and the wealth creators. People talk about the importance of the middle class. There's not one candidate that is regularly speaking, whether Democrats or Republicans, that are talking about what do we help to do to truly help the least among us. So when we talk about whether it's you know increasing revenue, cutting taxes, whatever it is that we do, no one is really talking about the people who are suffering the most in this country. And, and, this, I think and this, is, this is why I believe that when you look at President Obama's poll numbers cr increasing, when you see him getting far more aggressive out there, when he, he is now speaking to those bread and butter issues and is creating a contrast by saying, wait a minute, I put a jobs bill on the table. We're talking about rebuilding schools, mm -hmm. rebuilding bridges, re rebuilding roads, putting folks back to work in construction. I'm talking about you who are sitting there making possibly thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, and I literally have an opposition that says even when it comes to the folks making over a million, absolutely not. So, so at what and point? Even, even if it was proposed by Ronald Reagan. The opposition now says that's not good enough. That's a problem. I, and this is something I think that the Obama campaign has to w be very careful about, as all do politicians. When you look at that website for the 99 percent, you're right. It's not about being a Democrat or Republican. It is about, and it's not even just poor people. It is middle income people. Sure. It is about a veteran who says, I have served five tours. I lost my home. I can't get a job. I'm the 99 percent. And so when they look, Armstrong, at what's going on up there and you have Republicans talking about, you know, this rhetoric about who's a job creator and, and who, who is it. We're all job creators because as we create the need for a product or a service, that creates a job. That, that's how it all works. I, 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 and nobody no. is saying that the wealthy doesn't deserve what they've got, but they've got to do their fair share. But I, was gonna, I was going to add, and Armstrong said something that I think most people would agree with. Raising taxes doesn't in itself help the economy. You're right. It's how you spend those tax dollars that help the economy. My God, I don't know about you guys. I'm a product of public schools. Lord knows we need our public schools fixed. There is not a wealthy person in this country who got wealthy by themselves. They got wealthy by everybody sitting here at this table. And thank God that we used our tax dollars to create a middle class 
that allowed people to get wealthy and maybe help a few middle class folk go into the wealth. So it, you're right. It doesn't help the, pro- the economy, the, but it's how you the spend those is, taxes. The, pro- the problem is, is that even if the jobs bill, if, let's say if it had passed, legislation has its own movement of finally getting to the marketplace and creating these opportunities. You know, the president, and, I, and I'm sure the president means well. I, 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 I do believe that. But the problem is that people are hurting now. What is it that the president has that's working in the system now, that has already been enacted, that can match the rhetoric that's all, that, but, but I, but, while he's but, but on the road? But I got to go back to Joe's point. When you pass a stimulus bill, $787 billion in the first two months of your presidency, and you give the money to the states, and in South Carolina, the governor said no, Mississippi, no, Louisiana, no, all Alabama, no. All of a sudden, where's, where's the money going? What happened in this bill? The mayors were saying then, don't give it to those nuts, give it to us. It's hard for Republicans to stand here and say stimulus failed when the governors didn't want to spend the money. It was also 40% of the stimulus bill was tax cuts. So Republicans say we believe in tax cuts, so do they hate that tax cut? And so it's kind of hard to say we stopped it from working, and then we say, guess what? It didn't work. Well, Governor Sanford did not want it because the stipulations would have put the state in a worse situation. And in the long run, he was absolutely right. But, he, but again, though, no. Sanford, Jindal, Barber, those states where you had GOP governors, they said absolutely not. So the Republicans are saying stimulus didn't work. Get mad uh, at your own governors. And uh, Governor Perry took stimulus, created jobs. Now he's attacking stimulus, right? Now he's attacking the president. So the one of the Republican governors who actually took stimulus money had job creation. Got to close it out, folks. Unemployment rate, thankfully, dropped to 9%. 102,000 private sector jobs created last month. Obviously, we need more, but I'd rather see it drop us add jobs and actually lose jobs. 